Hello my soccer universe. Didn't necessarily plan to make this video but again like with the Premier League video yesterday I saw that it actually makes sense to do it because the next time we'll have one we have actually a pretty big game the Derby Madrileño to talk about and also it evens out you know the last time I left you with a makeup game for Benfica to be played so I thought I think it's the perfect timing uh, to do this video right now, right on the eve, kind of on the chair of the Champions League, if you will. In any case, I'm wearing Espanol uh, and Martin Braithwaite looks a whole lot better in an Espanol jersey than he ever did in a Barca jersey. I think this is a much better fit in every regard. However, it is about the two big guns in uh, Spain that uh, all the talk should be about because it will be between the two of them who will get the title. It seems like it will be a, a veritable title race. Barcelona looking good. Real Madrid, I think, just look a tad more sturdy because Barcelona had to fight a little bit against Sevilla. Sevilla, we talked about last uh, last time. They are in real trouble. And I would say the latest during the international break there needs to will be a coach um, in line to replace um, Lopetegui. No, I got his name. So yeah, that's the for that's for me the two big storylines in uh, Spain. However, uh, <laughs> another thread that we have it in poor Portugal. It was very much a round of very very late winners. And we will start in Portugal a little journey. Uh, makeup game. <laughs> I promised you Benfica. I, I lauded it very, very high. Well, against Passos, they had a little bit of a hard time. Had to come back uh, after a Kofi goal. However, just before the half, Neres and João Mario with a penalty turned the game around. So it was the 39th, it was 42nd, it was then 45 plus 4 uh, to get that goal um, to uh, turn the game around. And before that, uh, Otamendi and Otamendi goal was uh, not called for offside. Uh, Rightly so, of course. Um, Ramos makes it 3-1. You think everything is cruising. However, Kofi makes it again a little bit tighter than uh, Benfica fans would like. And it ends with a 3-2 win for Benfica, who at that point, of course, uh, go uh, top again or are up on top of the table. Then, uh, because of the Champions League, the two big Lisbon teams played already on Friday. And again, it was hard work for Benfica at home. Uh, while they controlled the game, uh, they had a hard time breaking down Vizela, who then took the lead through an Osmaic uh, counter-attack, which more or less was the only shot on goal. Um, and it took until the 76th that uh, David Neres, who we know, of course, from Ajax, could get the equalizer. Uh, at that point, it was just a matter of time. And then in stoppage time, it really got uh, weird because uh, first of Ramos gets sent off for a second yellow card. He had received the first one just a few minutes earlier for seemingly a dive, which no, this was a penalty. And then Benfica get a penalty deep, deep into stoppage time. I mean, it was nine minutes in. They get a penalty and it looked not like a hands penalty at all. It seems like uh, the ball hit the back first before it hits the hand and then João Mauro converts it. So a uh, very workmanlike effort. Uh, much less trouble for Sporting against Storil. Uh, settling it early by the 21st minute, we had already final score and Pedro Gonzalez uh, assisting both St. Just and Edwards uh, to get them an easy, easy win. Um, Braga win the derby against Guimaraes also very late. They miss a penalty throughout in the 58th minute and then in the 8th minute of stoppage time, Tormena, being assisted of course by Orta, uh, gets the winner there. And also Porto uh, kind of cruising a little bit like sports, uh, sporting. It took a little bit longer, but Taremi uh, and Galeno at 41st and 44th get the goals. Again, the goal was disallowed for off -site. So with that uh, in Portugal now we have an even table Benfica still unbeaten but you know all the high that I had last uh, week around and I still think that in qualifying they look absolutely imperious and probably they just held themselves back a little bit. 
Five wins out of five looks very, very calm, calm, convincing. Braga also a really good start with 13 and then it's Porto. Sporting losing already a little bit touch and I, I actually have, have a feeling that Sporting might have a hard time get, get getting in there. You see on the uh, performance bars, they are have a red bar, of course, Passos and Maritimo. Uh, much worse on the positive side. Braga and Portimonense. I mean, Portimonense is really, really high up there. Uh, being on the positive side in the expected standings now it's again porto ahead of benfica you know uh, it is super 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 tight there sporting probably will not play a role in the title race although it's very early but you know with the two losses already early on uh it might be tough braga again the eternal fourth place team uh in portugal Okay, upcoming games, uh, nothing really to talk home about, you see here for the next rounds and this time the, um, um, uh, the dates are correct, I could find actual dates later, but of course there might be a switch around, to me the biggest one is in two weeks, Boavista against Sporting, because that seems like a traditional duel, but um, nothing really big, we should be talking about that the big teams are again winning, uh, Braga against Rio Ave uh, next weekend could be interesting, and I want to see Vizela, Vizela just bought a, a striker from Lusk, so I want to see how he is doing there. Going over to Spain, the weekend started with a 3-0 win for Celta over Cadiz, who still have not scored a goal. <laughs> but, you know, the first big one was uh, Real Madrid against Real Betis. I think it was 1v2 at this point. A rather, a rather interesting ma matchup that was just a little bit washed out for me. I mean, the whole La Liga match day. Since everyone was playing on a Saturday, if it be Bundesliga, be it Premier League, be it uh, Serie A, all of the big ones were playing on a Saturday. And so La Liga took a little bit of a step back for me because although Real Madrid against Real Betis was clearly the best one, it was slightly overlapping with the Milan Dur uh, Derby. So I knew I will not, not be able to watch it. Also, it was Bayern against Union, which I was really, really interested in. So, yeah. But from what I, I could see, it was uh, Real Madrid had to fight hard and uh, Betis gave them actually a game. I mean, Vinicius Junior takes an, or gives them an early lead. Sergio Canales uh, equalizes. However, the big moment happened already a little bit sooner when Fnabil Fekir comes off with an injury, which kind of broke Betis's game. It still took Real Madrid a big, uh, many, uh, you know, a lot of effort, let, let's put it that way, to get uh, the goals. It, the winning goal comes through Rodrigo with Benzema missing an open net at one, one, one point, but you see the last minute reflection there as well. So yeah, still Real Madrid too good. Real Sociedad against Atletico Madrid was also a more entertaining game than one would expect. Problem again, same time as the Milan Derby. So uh, I did not watch it. Morata gives Atletico an early lead and then you thought uh, already that he has scored a second one. However, in VAR you clearly see that there's a handball in the build-up. And that gives then uh, Real Sociedad the upper hand. And newly acquired Sadiq uh, after Joe assist gives them the equalizer. And then they were pushing for the second goal. Of course, I have to mention uh, the Griezmann situation because there is a clause in his contract that if he plays, I think, more than like 45 minutes or something like that on average per game, that Atletico need to buy him from Barcelona or need to give, give him 40 million. And Atletico really don't want to do that. He is now a super sub and he's only playing the last half hour every game. And you can put your timer there. He will come on around the 60th minute. Typically Atletico, I will say in many ways, but yeah, 1-1. One, one. Uh, speaking of Barcelona, uh, they had their hands full with the, Barcel uh, with, with the Sevilla side, who actually came out with a slightly different formation, and Xavi admitted as much, and I, again, I hear interviews with Xavi in English, and he's always saying the Mandalorian. This is the way, this is the way. Typically Mandalorian, I mean, I, I'm cracking up every single time, and I hope there's some other Mandalorian uh, fans out there that uh, see the same way. So Sevilla have at least three, arguably five good chances to take the lead. They were the better team. However, it's one quick interception, one quick counter-attack that Rafinha then does off and makes it 1-0 in 21st minute against the run of play. First shocker, and then the second one is when Kunde on his return uh, to Sevilla assists Lewandowski and the way Lewandowski takes uh, the uh, the ball down with his chest and you can see it even on the still picture that I've put for the um, uh, 
for uh, the thumb, the thumb, the, how his eyes are fixed on the ball. A brilliant finish. And yes, Lewandowski elevates Barca to the next level. Not only because he's a great striker, but he's overall a great footballer, a complete footballer. And that actually works well for Barca. Then Eric Garcia makes it 3-0. Uh, with the Conde assist and it was utter destruction for Sevilla who just do not look well put together and it will be hard for Sevilla but you know they might actually have them down as an early favorite for the 24 uh, Europa League winners that's what I want to say there uh, the remarkable games from Sunday it was not much although I, I gotta give it to La Liga they had a, a, actually a few more in interesting ones um, as I said, Espanyol get the win thanks to a Breathwaite goal uh, in the 83rd minute, uh, I see. I said already, I'm really happy Breathwaite being uh, at Est Espanyol. Villarreal showing that they might actually be now the fourth best team or among the four best teams in Spain. I'm not even sure of the fourth best because Atleti doesn't look convincing, but you know, with their squad, they should do it. Uh, but I have to give a shout out to my boy Gattuso. I love Gattuso. I always loved Gattuso. Uh, and as a, as a coach, I find him so super underrated. Yes, he might not be a attack tactical genius. And people uh, get so caught up with his playing style and with his roughness uh, that they overlook that he's a really good man, man manager. And what actually makes me also smile that he, of course, is Samo Castillejo, who came from Milan. He played Villarreal Milan now to Valencia, who actually scored a goal. Uh, with him and he knows him quite quite well from his time time in Milan. Uh, it was a very positive performance. Let's put it that one. Uh, they had a five minute lead by the 68th minute against a Getafe team that might be in an early relegation battle already. Um, and yeah, if things are going up for Valencia, that is good for the league because Valencia is one of those teams that definitely would belong uh, in at least in a conversation for a top four spot. And yesterday evening, and that's why the video call got late. Uh, we had Valladolid beating Almeria 1-0 in a battle of two promoted teams. Meaning a situation up top, it's what we would expect. Real Madrid and Barcelona after four rounds. Villarreal and Betis. I actually wouldn't mind this top four, honest, honestly, because it would give us a little bit of a change. Uh, let's see how Atleti will go in there. Um, I also, also want to see how the hard, hard two Basque teams are performing. As I said, Sevilla sits now in 17. And they do not look good. I think Lopetegui is a dead man walking uh, in a figurative sense, not in a literal sense. Getafe and Gattis, early candidates for getting relegation. Uh, but, you know, we have to see. If you look at the performance, but it's still, I said it last week, the striking thing is Sevilla. Uh, that Villarreal is doing well. That Osasuna, saying way too little about Osasuna. But again, I'm not yet fully into this uh, season. Um, but they are doing really well. And the Real Madrid also, I mean, four wins out of, out of four is a pretty good start overall. And I have already said what's on the, on the bottom. As for the expected standings, uh, at the moment, Girona, Elche and Cadiz. Um, with, um, yeah, Getafe is still sort of in midfield, but, you know, don't hold your breath. Uh, Getafe, let's see if they will hold, hold, hold on, one, two, three, four. The th big three plus Villarreal, and I think this is what we said ahead of the season. He is now for the upcoming two weeks. Uh, next week, I think Betis against Villarreal is a match that, if you have no other interest, that I think is worth watching. Those are re two really, really, really good teams. i uh, also looking at Espanyol, Sevilla for more uh, drama. Barca and Real Madrid have relatively winnable games coming as well and Atletico might have the hands full with Celta uh, and then it's all about the Derby Madrileño late on Sunday evening Barca actually by that time could have well the lead in the league and might hold on to it although I think that Real Madrid will get them Villarreal Sevilla last season will, will, will have been a big one this one not so much okay Short video this time around, but I think that's actually worth it. Um, please let, let, let me know what you thought about uh, what was happening in the uh, Iberian Peninsula, as I you like to say. Uh, add something below if you've seen more than me, because this will just add to it. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so they get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!